Welcome back, Achievers, to an unusual recording of these Achievers Gaming Podcasts. So, I have today with me Odell Harmon Jr. post the beginning of the show. So, he was limited on time. So, what we did was, let's compromise. Let's hit the middle of the show, and then I'll do the beginning later. And that's what we did. To save on time, make it make sure he can make his thing. He has a full-time job, and of course, a podcast on the side. So, he's a busy man. So... That's the compromise. I'm going to be doing Not So Rapid Fire and Rumor Roundup separately from the show. It will be combined for you at home and you won't even notice a difference. But I did want to open with that just so you don't notice something strange and you're like, what's happening? Why are you only talking by yourself now and not later? Are you some sort of being from the future that inserted himself into the internet and now has taken control of my device and now knows my name, David? Anyways, Not So Rapid Fire. Gotham Knights reviews are out. You can go read them if you want from whoever you'd like. Of course, we don't do early access for games. So, uh, well, I'm, I say that like it's a choice. <laughs> it is a choice personally. If someone gave it, I wouldn't accept it. But uh, no one cares about us anyways. But go read the reviews if you want. Uh, not glowing, uh, to say the least. Um, hopefully, I will like it. I will still be buying and playing this game. I still think it will be good. At least good enough for me. I, I saw... A bunch of people say it's okay, to it's terrible, to don't even play it, to I don't recommend it, to the story is great. The cur- like, I heard uh, pretty much every amalgamation of this game is good to bad. So, go check them out if you are wary of your purchase. I'm still going to be buying it myself. Now, Gotham Knights is out. Of course, there was a controversy earlier in the week about the performance mode of the game. Gotham Knights on consoles is only going to be 30 frames per second. I think that's a bit of a letdown, to say the least. So, Flory Marty, Flor Marty gave an official statement on their Discord when rumors were circulating. So, pretty much someone, I think, clipped or broke NDA or something. Someone said something, and I think a Reddit picked it up. That was like, oh, this this is thir- not 30 frames on consoles. And I was like, what? And everyone's like, what? No way. They pretty much didn't believe it until they made this statement on their official Discord. Quote, hello, everyone. I know many of you are wondering about the availability of a performance mode for Gotham Knights on consoles. Due to the types of features we have in our game, like providing a fully untethered co-op experience in our highly detailed open world, it's not as straightforward as lowering the re- resolution and getting a higher frames per second. For this reason, our game does not have a performance quality toggle option and will run at 30 frames per second on consoles. This was met with wide, wild, widely disdain. Just no one likes this option. I don't. I think it's laughable that this game doesn't have 60 frames at even the lowest of standards. Uh, we're going to get into an opinion on that later that I fully disagree with, but, but let's not skip ahead. First off, um, I think at least from trailers this game doesn't look very pretty so i imagine getting to 60 frames it has to be the bare minimum internally it sh- it should at least should have been i think a marker was missed if that wasn't or management just does not understand the ecosystem right now or does not read the room because the the room says games at least that are high action i'm going to be jumping from person to person i'm beating people up it should bare minimum be 60 frames per second I understand the counter argument of some people saying, well, Batman Arkham wasn't. That was in a bygone era that I think we've moved on now. I think this next generation of consoles need to be running at 60 frames. I think that's now the benchmark. I think that is now kind of the bare minimum people have to hit. You need to have a performance mode and you need to have an optional uh, high fidelity mode. I understand her argument is like, it's just not that easy. I get it. I understand it's not easy. I'm not saying it is, but you should do it. And I'd hate to be the backseat game developer here because I don't understand the process of doing things like this. I understand there there's RAM costs and things of that nature. I understand all these things, but that should have been priority kind of one about performance. I saw that the minimum requirements on, on running it on PC, apparently, first off, it's not even running well to begin with, but uh, regardless of your graphics card. But I saw the minimum requirements was like a... Like a what was it, like a 1660 or something? And I'm like, so you're trying to tell me you can't 
get 60 frames on our systems but you can get it working on something lower than that like a 10 like a 2050 or something like that's just un unbelievable so i i just fully understand that this is probably an engineering problem that they just couldn't figure out and they were just hoping no one would care uh but i think it's come to find out a lot of people cared <laughs> and uh i would say unsurprisingly so and that did prompt uh, Lee Denovolt, a um, Rocksteady developer, to comment on all of this. Pretty much blaming the Series S for all this, kind of. Uh, very strange. So he pretty much deleted his account now because uh, he said some very unwise things, I would say. Especially given the things. Now, he is a smart man. I won't say he made anything an error. And he probably is right with a lot of his things, but... He was saying that multi-platform games always have to optimize for the lowest performer, and it's the Series S GPU's mostly fault. Now, that's very interesting because, as far as I understand, the Series S is actually pretty strong, especially for the price point. And, and again, I'm going to say it again. Why are you able to get these PC games running on there? That's something that I just don't understand. I'm not saying that I'm correct in this assumption that like if you can run it on PC at the lowest graphics card, then you should be able to do it on Series S. I don't know. I'm not an engineer. I'm just, I'm just saying optically through someone who does not understand the tech and the ways these games operate i have to side from my internal dialogue here and say that's just not going to be good enough for me it ha we have to have a new bar at some point and we can't just be like oh it's not 60 frames okay we'll just accept that and eat it and eat you know oh no yeah we shouldn't have opinions because we don't understand games that's i hate that argument i had someone try to tell me that when i was in, uh, arguing something about destiny that if um you're not a game developer. You shouldn't give your opinions, which is one of the most laughable things I've probably ever heard from a person, a grown person before. Now, this led me to VGC. So this actually went live today at 1.30 p.m. Uh, developer claims many studios are asking Xbox to drop mandatory Series S compatibility. Now, this is written by Tom Ivan over there. Uh, great website, by the way, VGC. You should go check it out give this article a read because i could not do a write-up on it as uh this was kind of at the wire I, I didn't have time to do this at one no one life vfx artist ian mcclure made a claim on twitter in response to a comment from better games journalist jeff gersman who said he thinks the whole quote series s is holding back next gen arguments uh next gen games uh end quote argument doesn't hold up quote most of these games also come to pc and already have to cover a wide variety of configurations gersman pointed out McClure, who worked on last year's Xbox Series S and X and PC game I Am Fish at Bosia. What kind of name is that? Which also develops and publishes the Surgeon Simulator responds, quote, It might sound broken, and the reason you are hearing it a lot right now is because many developers are have, have been sitting in meetings for the past year desperately trying to get Series S launch requirements dropped. Studios have been through one development cycle where Series S turned out to be an albatross around the neck of production. And now games are firmly being developed with new consoles in mind. Teams do not want to repeat the process, unquote. Uh, they've all been protected, by the way, so only approved followers can see these tweets now. He actually went uh, dark, so he does not want people reading this. Um, in a series of sincerely tweets last week when initially sparked the golf nights won't have performance, blah, blah, blah. Rocksteady senior character technical artist Lee De Denevold also claimed the trade-offs. Quote, I wish gamers understand what 60 frames per second means. In terms of all these things they lose to make the game run that fast, he said. Especially taking into account that we have a current gen console that's not much better than the last gen one. End quote. Responding to a question about the hardware bottleneck, he singled out the Series S GPU, noting that platforms need to optimize for the lowest performer. By the way, something I've been saying for years, and uh, the game industry refuses to believe. I, again, I I thought the Series S GPU was better than this. Again, they're, they're still using old PC tech, so I'm, I'm very confused on the argument here, but again, I hope some game dev explains this to me. Anyways, Denver went on to claim that, quote, an entire generation of games hamstrung by that potato, end quote, because Microsoft insists that games are released on both Series S and the relatively powerful Series X. Digital Refugees' Alexander Batagala claimed in May to have heard that some developers that memory constraints were making Xbox Series S a pain to work with. Now, if you remember, we did cover a story prior, I believe, in March of this year. I can't quite remember. They, they did open up a little bit of the memory constraints on the Series S to try and aid game developers so it's clear that xbox heard these 
problems and are trying to remedy them. I'm curious if they're going to now open it up more to try and satisfy these people because clearly people are upset and they need to not have the Series S be a detriment if you're requiring a both Series S and X version. Quote, we've heard from multiple developers that they kind of feel the Series S in a bit of a pain at times. Not the CPU or GPU power there, but it's more like the memory constraints. In a game software development kit released in June, Microsoft said it it made, quote, hundreds of additional megabytes of memory available to Series S developers. That's what I just said. Actually, so it was June. I I apologize. I said March. This gave developers more control over memory, which can improve graphics performance and memory constrained conditions. Yeah, so we actually covered that back in June. Sorry. It was fresh on my mind, so I should have thought it was earlier. But yeah, it's there we go. I mean, they tried to remedy the situation. Maybe it hasn't worked. Maybe they haven't tried the new memory constraints because we're, they're working on old versions or something. I don't know. But hopefully this is remedied because if this is true, this needs to be fixed ASAP by Microsoft and we need to find some sort of solution. Maybe we try to use cloud servers to try and alleviate some of the stress on the Series S uh, because that's like the big hot topic Microsoft wants to be pushing, right? Cloud servers. So maybe we try and do that. Maybe the cloud... Uh, will aid some way in offsets the processing or something. I don't know, but this need, this now needs to be numero uno. If this is true, if this really is the case at Microsoft, they're sitting there, they're thinking, Hey, what's our biggest number one issue. If this really is holding back devs in this generation and it's their fault, that needs to be singled out. I will do a counterpoint. Why is it not work on PS five then? And why isn't it optional on both, series s and then x and then ps5 because if it doesn't work on the series s but it, it does work on the series x and ps5 versions then why is it not talkable on those uh, it's still confused I'm, again still getting confusing still getting kind of strange responses to these things again not a developer but i am not going to hold back my thoughts regardless of that i'm stupid so i i have the right to say it <laughs> Uh, this is going to be a quick one. Microsoft is laying off a thousand people across their entire company. This ranges from literally every section of Microsoft. They are slashing, slashing, slashing. Uh, this is Xbox. This is their military division. This is their Win- uh, Windows division. Office. I mean, literally every part of their thing saw some sort of cut. So I think this is just the beginning of this recession that America and I mean, really the world is finding themselves in. That we're just going to keep seeing layoffs. We already saw them at places like, I believe, Polygon and Kotaku, I believe, lost some people. I believe we're seeing, of course, we talked about it on the show that we just recorded. G4 is gone uh, after their layoffs. They're just straight up gone now. There's so many different things that that we're going to keep seeing. I wouldn't be shocked if we start seeing a couple bigger names get laid off. Again, never happy for these cases. I'm just getting the fact that everyone's going to feel their wallets shrinking up a little bit. And what does that say to big money? That means they got to start cutting people. And that's just the unfortunate reality. A new trailer for Final Fantasy 16 is out now called Ambitions. Now, this was just a quick write-up I wanted to do about the game. Uh, this uh, I haven't watched it yet, but I'm hearing great things. Now, I, I'm in that weird spot where it's like, ooh, do I watch it? Because I kind of want to go in like super dark. But it seems like we might be far from a release, so I feel like I should just watch it and then just be like, oh, okay, this looks this looks fun. Um, I will say, every time we see Final Fantasy 16, it's always the same fucking dark landscape, so like, can we get some lights? Can we get some pretty colors, please? Because why is it like so gothic everywhere? Like, Let's get some lights. Let's get some lights, or at least some pretty daytime, or, or night skies at least. Let's get some Aurora Borealises going or something. I don't know, but Every time we see it, it's always a very dark night sky. And I'm like, all right, let's get some cool stuff going. This is uh, via Video Games Chronicle. EA is closing some servers. So I just want to bring this to attention. Online support for Army of the Two, the 40th day. Army of Two, the Devil's Cartel will cease on October 20th. Online servers for Mercenaries 2 on PS3 and Xbox 360, Command and Conquer Red Alert, PS3 and Xbox 360, Command and Conquer 3, Tiberian Wars, including the Kane's Wrath expansion on Xbox 360, will be closed on November 9th. Online support will be shut down for Onrush November 30th, and for Mirror's Edge, NBA Jam on Fire Edition, Gatling Gears, and Shank 2 on January 19th, 2023. So a lot of games are being turned off. If you'd like to play them one more time, make sure to do them before the dates that I listed previously. Uh, I imagine most people will not miss these. I do wish that we had ways of moving these servers forward in some way um, so we can preserve a lot of these experiences, but I imagine that's very hard. So 
The DualSense was revealed. And surprisingly, Prime 4 for $200 was revealed as well. Here's everything that you can... Um, here's everything that will come with it if you decide to purchase. DualSense Edge Wireless Controller, a USB braided cable, two standard caps, two high dome caps, two low dome caps, two half dome back buttons, two lever back buttons, a connector housing, and a carrying case. So it literally looks like the exact same things that an Elite controller comes with pretty much to the T. And they are not taking prisoners with that price point of $200. That is very high for the uh, for the controller. I'm very shocked that they actually went with that. I remember actually specifically Dustin Furman on Last End Media saying he thought it was going to be $200. He reminded us of that fact. He retweeted a tweet about that. And I... I almost agreed with him at the time. Like, yeah, that sounds like something PlayStation would do. And I just kind of offhandly thought it and was like, eh, they won't really do it, though. They did. They did. They did it. It's 200 bucks. I can't believe it. They're not even trying to compete with the other Elite controller. Now being um, uh, the Elite controller is $179.99 for the Series 2 full in package. And for a reductionary price, you can just get the Elite controller for, I believe, 139 now. So... Oof, that is rough pill to swallow for a PlayStation centric fan. If you're dual platform, then maybe you don't care as much. I'm thinking about buying one, although I might wait for a sale because 200 is very pricey, very pricey for this. Very curious, but I have gotten used to triggers on my controllers. Excuse me, sorry. I've gotten used to triggers on my controllers, the back triggers. So like I don't want to use those. I like my back buttons, so I might buy it just so I can get my back buttons experience on the play on the PlayStation. I don't know. This might be a situation where I, you know, pre-order at something like GameStop and like slowly pay it off versus like selling at 200 bucks when it launches. Ooh, and something I did forget. I think they say I'll, I'll go ahead and quick quickly click on it. See if I can pre-orders will begin October 25th, Tuesday, October 25th. You will also be able to buy replaceable stick modules for $19.99. Just so you know. Uh, a couple last things here. Uh, the National Labor Rel uh, Relations Board has ruled that 21 QA testers at Blizzard Albany, which is the former Vicarious Vision Studios, will be able to vote in a union election. So they're going to be able to unionize. We're going to, I think, see little parts of the QA designers, uh, sorry, QA testers do this. I think it's rather wise for specifically QA testers. And developers uh, will make their own decisions. They get paid pretty well i believe now so I, I don't think that's really a problem for a lot of them but qa testers definitely should probably have some sort of union going only because they're so easily dispatchable you should probably have a quality assurance testers like some sort of union that understands like what they're doing and how much they're paid and what contracts they accept because it's so easy to just let these people go under contracts that that are good for them in the short term but I believe I wouldn't be shocked if QA testers are, you know, probably taking advantage of a little bit, a little bit would be shocked because it's just so it's probably easy, right? You can probably the idea of a QA tester, of course, is incredibly difficult, but they might see it as dispensable as I feel like I have been viewed in several of my jobs that I've done as uh, replaceable, at least easily. New update is live on Xbox. Here's what to expect. You can change your TV volume natively through your thing so you, you have to uh, obviously activate the hdmi cec options in your xbox to be able to do this but it will change your tv volume for you if you'd like to i think you can do it in the settings i don't know if there's like a detachable thing that you can do like anytime you're playing i think you have to go into your settings but that's now live you can mute your startup audio so the loud xbox series x audio that starts so you could you can turn that off i believe you can also turn off the startup sound when you click your xbox button now as well so that's also an option. Or that always was an option. I don't remember. I think this is the power chime. Pretty sure you can turn that off. Changes to the Xbox power. Oh, and by the way, you can also change the light. I think that was last month. You can turn the light off. So like if you click it, like the light won't turn on. This is interesting. Change it to the Xbox power mode names. So the actual names are different now. I believe it's... Uh, oh, it's it's called sleep and uh, turn off or, or shut down. Sh sleep and shut down. So sleep is what... um instant was was previously and then of course shutdown is the previous energy saving mode of course one is more eco-friendly but and it'll actually tell you how much watts you use now if that is your concern you want to you know save a couple pennies every few uh, months a couple uh, maybe a dollar or two 
you can have your Xbox shut off fully. Xbox pass keys and guest keys are now Xbox pins. That's just a, this is a name chain. Nothing crazy here. They just change it to Xbox pins. So it's all the same thing. There's going to be an Xbox controller firmware update. Get ready for that. Get ready to upgrade your controllers. And there was no rumor roundup this week because um, I think I just pushed all the rumors into the actual full show. Um, because I knew Odell, I wouldn't have Odell for long. So I just threw him into the show. Um, but that is the beginning of the show. So, like I said, we are going to now cut to me and Odell right now. Welcome back to the middle of the show, kind of, of the Easy Achievers Game Podcast with Odell Harmon Jr. How are you, my man, from PR at Stride? Yes, Thank you for sir. joining me I'm today. I'm doing well. How about yourself? It's great. It's been a good day. We're getting a little chilly here. I live in Georgia, so it's starting to get chill. Especially late at night, you oh. walk out, you get that nice night chill. So it's it's great here. How are you? I'm doing good. I live in Houston, so you know, mm. also in the south, also getting a little chilly. Mm -hmm. It's starting, and every time it starts, I I miss it. When it comes out, I'm like, mm, it's gonna be good. It's gonna be good. We got Halloween very soon too, which I don't know if you know this about me. We're gonna get in the show because I know you have to leave soon, but. I, I love being in the house with the full candy bars. So I'm always excited Ooh. to see the kid's face when you give them the full candy bars. So as soon as we hit Halloween, me and my wife get dressed up, we stand out, we give out <laughs> the big candy bars, and it's so much fun. Anyways. Uh, I'm, I'm, the, I'm the house with the lights off and no candy. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't be that. My wife would uh, divorce me if I did that. So You know, when I'm a married man, that might change. Mm. But as my bachelor life, that, that, that is Here the house go. I am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well... First off, I want to point out the beautiful keyblade that you have in your background there. Yeah, it caught my oh, eye just you. now, and my God, I would kill for one of those. I have like a crappy styrofoam one. That one looks incredible. Uh, so the trick is, uh, I went to the Ren the Renaissance Festival here in uh, Texas, and you know they always make you know real swords and weapons. And there yeah. was a guy; he literally had just a single keyblade. I guess they weren't selling well. Or whatever. I don't. I don't know. He just had one, and it was sitting there. And I was like, "How much?" And he was like, "One fifty. And oh. I was like, "I have a hundred cash right here, right now." Nice. And he was like, "Sold." He was like, "Fine, take it. I've had this for like yeah, a year. you know." And it's made out of real steel. Like, if you oh. hit someone, you will hurt them with it. Oh my god, that's what I've always wanted. And I just, I was always jealous because I, I think E three in twenty eighteen or something, someone gave out a key and he was walking around with it. I was like, oh my god, I would love, I would cry if I got one of those. But anyways, let's start with the show because we do only have Odell for a little bit. That's why we only have him in half of the show. So let's just get started with the show. All right. Well, Tom Warren from The Verge has an interesting write-up that I would not have expected, but paints a picture about Microsoft's latest dealings. Microsoft, the giant tech megacorp, has had to reveal in a recent filing to the CMA for the continued battle for the Activision Blizzard deal. Yes, we're still talking about this, unfortunately. To go through that, it is planning to open a mobile storefront. Upon being asked about this, what is the big motivation behind the purchase of Activision Blizzard? Microsoft stated such, quote, the transaction will improve Microsoft's ability to create a next-generation game store, which operates across a range of devices, including mobile, as a result of the addition of Activision Blizzard's content. Building on Activision Blizzard's existing communities of gamers, Xbox will seek to scale the Xbox Store to mobile, attracting gamers to a new Xbox mobile platform, shifting consumers away from the Google Play Store and the App Store on mobile devices will, however, require a major shift in consumer behavior. Microsoft hoped that by offering well-known and popular content, gamers would be more inclined to try something new. End quote. Of course, Call of Duty Mobile, Candy Crush Saga, and other more King-related games will drive this initiative on expanding their storefront to multiple devices and give some light on why Microsoft was so interested in helping Epic Games in their legal uh, battle with Apple, I believe, about two years ago, three years ago now, something like that. When detailing this opportunity on and what it could provide to Microsoft, they said, quote, the transaction gives Microsoft a meaningful presence in mobile gaming. Mobile gaming revenues from King's Division and titles such as Call of Duty Mobile, as well as the ancillary revenue represented more than half of Activision Blizzard's revenue in the first half of 2022. Mobile consumers account for around three quarters of its monthly active users. Microsoft currently has no meaningful presence in mobile gaming. And the transaction will bring much needed expertise in mobile game development, marketing, and advertising. Activision Blizzard will be able to contribute its learnings from developing and publishing mobile games 
to Xbox Gaming Studios, end quote. Now, we have a very dramatic episode for you this week, as not only this, but very other dramas throughout the industry to talk about some very more serious as those. But this is something I wanted to bring to everyone's attention and ask you, Odell, on... First off, it, I think it paints a picture a little bit better of why they're so easily to fork over this giant sum of cash to be able to grab Activision Blizzard. I think it's easy to say, oh my god, it's Call of Duty. But of course, that's nothing in comparison to as something like King Candy Crush. And now it makes a lot more sense when they can get a mobile store front going and have the backing of Call of Duty Mobile and Candy Crush Saga behind it. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to be honest. The mobile gaming space, you know, throughout the years... You know, I'm not gonna lie. I was one of those people. It's like <laughs> mobile gaming. <laughs> yeah, me too. You know, you know, get a real controller. Me and too. now I'm me just too. like, bro, mobile gaming. It's it's crazy when you think about. They have mobile games that makes billions of dollars. Yeah. And and when you think about, I mean, I don't know. I don't. I can't break down how much it costs to make a mobile game, but it is considerably less. It is less yeah. than a console game. That's just that's just pure fact. Yeah. So and your, your returns on investment must be huge. Mm -hmm. I mean just insanely huge the free-to-play model works yeah yeah the plain and simple and it's just you know going forward i mean look at nintendo look at sega look at so many other games that not only have mobile games that are popular but actual games that are on consoles be on mobile and you know i mean apex mobile just recently launched and you know that apparently that's been doing well according to them i don't have the numbers but according to them i don't see why it wouldn't be right and it's just if you're gonna be a big time game developer it's just the air you can no longer ignore yeah. Or is is I don't want to say ignore it. It's not an area you can say, ah, we can live without it. I think we can live without it phase has gone and went. And it has and it's probably you know, is a part of every major company's decision. Like, will we port this game to mobile? Will it be on mobile? Can this game be on mobile? Will we make mobile versions of this IP? I agree. I think we're seeing this not only in Microsoft clearly just stating that they're interested in we see Sony buying. Blanking on the studio right now, but they currently just bought a mobile uh, studio and said outright that this is to make mobile games of their IP. So I think we're going to start seeing a almost re-embracement because I remember, I mean, wow, probably what, 10 years ago when like the mobile boom happened, everyone kind of tried something, everyone kind of tried something and then nothing, you know, not everything that succeeded, succeeded and everyone who didn't just kind of step back. And it looks like we're kind of just going to happen that again. We're going to have this giant boom because it's just so much money involved that it is similar to everyone trying to be like the next Fortnite with like their version of Battle Royale. They don't care if it fails because if one of their 10 attempts is half of Fortnite, that pays for them all and then some. So although I am one of the people where I, I can't even bring myself to care about the mobile storefront, it is something that is incredibly important to the industry. Oh, yeah. And the thing I find interesting, like, let's just not even say just, oh, mobile games, just like when I just games in general, because, you know, 10 years ago, it'll be like, oh, we're going to put Call of Duty on mobile. And you're like, huh, why would you do that? Why yeah. would you play like this yep. watered down, broken version of the game? And now it's no, it's the game. It's the yeah. It, it, it's the game, you know, and when you think about it, there's some people. You know, there's markets like China where, you know, they can't get consoles. So, mm -hmm. like, PC and mobile is basically all they have. And there's other people where it's just like, hey, everyone has a phone. Like, it's hard to convince someone to get, you know, a $500, $400, $300 dollar console and then buy this game. But if we can just meet them where they're at, win-win. Yeah, go to where they're at already. I think that's very wise of you to say. I, th I think it's just... I think it's at, at that point where they just, it's just too big to ignore it. And the Xbox and Sony are just showing like, hey, we, we got to at least try with some of our IPs and see what sticks. And Xbox is doing the very Xbox thing of just buying something and then using what they bought uh, to their uh, financial ways. Yeah, if you take it serious, there will be success to be found. Yes, agreed. And then, you know... That I what I what it, what I'm still getting used to is now that we have cross play with mobile that like yeah I remember someone's like oh I play Genshin Impact Mobile and I was like oh I play PS5 and they're like oh there's cross play with that now I'm like there's no there's, I was like, yeah. there's no way yeah yeah there's no way <laughs> like I remember the first time what? I played Fortnite I think it was like me my wife and like our friends and we would play like on our Switch and they and one of them played on their phone and I was like this is weird <laughs> like this is very strange and it's just something that's 
increasingly more common and i think we're gonna see more of i, I don't think we're too far away from call of duty mobile or apex legends just straight up just being the same experience at least th via a crossplay method yeah you know you got you know devices like the steam deck and the backbone for your phones and stuff and it, and it's just it's it's weird because you know again nintendo they're always they're always just so far ahead of the curve yep. you know we've had the game boys and the ds lines you know and we had the switch and i'm just like nintendo was just weirdly just a good decade ahead of everyone else because mm -hmm. i remember people would think like i don't know if you remember when the ds came out and like Nintendo will support the DS and 3DS heavily. Heavily. And yeah. people are like, why are they putting so much resources in this? Like, I mean, yeah, it's cool, but people really do people really want these huge experiences in the palm of their hands? The answer is yes, apparently. The answer is very much yes. Yeah. And and then yeah, and those things were always huge, especially in places like Japan and things, and their attach rate was always really good too. And Nintendo, I know so many people would kill for Nintendo's uh attach rate for their games. Let's move on to some pay disputes. During the tumultuous time Platinum seems to be going through, openly saying they want to be purchased, uh, this story that we're about to cover and the failure of Babylon's fall. We have a good bit to cover with this one, and we're going to discuss the future of Platinum, but let's first cover what happened with Helena Taylor. Money. It's arguably the most important resource in our lives, and Helena Taylor, the former voice actor of Bayonetta for the first and second game, went on Twitter to voice a problem she had with the pay. She was going to be given if she returned to a role as Bayonetta, in a video posted to her official account, she went on record stating that Platinum Games was going to offer her a flat rate with no additional benefits to voice Bayonetta in a third game, a whopping $4,000 to voice the entirety of the game. Now, this was met with lots of fans, of course, upset, and Helena herself asking people to boycott the game when it releases, saying in the video, quote, if you're someone who cares about people, who cares about the world around you, who cares about who gets hurt with these financial decisions, then I urge you to boycott this game, end quote. Very serious way of putting this. All of this going on uh, caused the director of the game, Hideki Kamai, uh, Kamuai? Nah, I always butcher the Japanese spelling, so I apologize for that, to respond to the allegations on his Twitter saying, quote, sad and deplorable about the attitude of untruth. That's what all I can tell now. By the where, uh, sorry, by the way, beware of my rules. All in uh, caps, end quote. I think that's just... um. Japanese to English writing, because I don't, that doesn't make sense. Now, this is where Bloomberg comes into the story, as Jason Schreier had some evidence that may point to the contrary. A document given to the reporter, but not shared as to avoid any legal troubles with the person who provided it. Platinum Games was going to hire Helena Trailer for $3,000 to $4,000 for at least five sessions, each with four hours in the studio, which would, of course, bring the total of up to about $15,000, but this was, of course, declined by her, and she countered with a six-figure sum and residuals, and following negotiations that ultimately fell through, the auditioned for a new actor to replace her and ultimately found Jennifer Hale to do the voice. Helena says all of this is untrue, and Platinum Games is just trying to save their asses, using her words here. The Bayonetta franchise started with 2009's Bayonetta, and is going to be continued with Bayonetta 3, which is set to release October 28th, 2022, and it's the third game in this uh, Devil May Cry-inspired franchise. And it's being developed by the now-waning Platinum Games, which is as for not for this series, may have been in much more trouble than they already are currently. Now, so many different ways we can attack the story. Odell, I want to start with Helena here and discuss the interesting point that we find ourselves in. It seems like everyone was upset for one day that Helena was not paid well. And then the next day, it seems like this 15,000 sum, or at least 15 to 20,000 sum. I saw a bunch of different numbers being pointed around, but it seems everyone kind of calmed down after that was said and they took it seriously i would argue that either some is laughable especially to a va uh or sorry a voice actress um especially given her attitude she's classically trained and uh it, it would cost a lot more than fifteen thousand dollars to get her in a booth now maybe there's a couple things that you can say maybe she is lying maybe she is referencing a three thousand dollars that she was going to be paid if she cameoed they said they would come back and she could cameo in the game and they would pay her three grand for one session maybe she's talking about that maybe she's talking about per session maybe she's being uh purposely vague who knows but i wanted to see what your thought was because this was kind of everywhere for about two days okay so i already talked about this at nauseam on my other uh 
podcast, but here's some things that, I want what, to what, What's that know. podcast? What's that, what's that podcast? Oh, the Toadstool Boardroom. You can Toadstool find it anywhere Board. podcasts are found. Oh, okay. Very yeah, good. it's our Nintendo podcast. But uh, so there is a video game voice actor union, SAG yes. AFTRA. That's S A G A F T R A. By their rules, you know, a video game voice actor must make at least, I believe, it's a one thousand to two thousand dollars per mm. session. Yeah. Uh, and you know, a session could be anywhere from three to five hours, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You know, these rules have been signed on and they're unionized, they're good. So her initial claim for four thousand total over the course of five sessions would have been gr- you know grossly under what you know the union says they cannot be paid under. Yeah, it's, I'm not gonna lie, it's not a lot to begin with, no. but there are rules and stimulations, and I would assume platinum is very aware of this and they wouldn't do anything that would literally get them sued by you know the union and so on and so forth. I don't know what she was offered, but you are worth as much as you think you are. They gave her an offer. We don't know what that is. That's, you know, but we know there was an offer made. We know she rejected said offer. Do we know that? That's true for both sides of the stories. Both the, the two things both sides agree on. There was an initial offer. The offer was rejected. They went into negotiations. Negotiations, they could not reach an agreement. They moved on. Now, how nasty it was, who mm-hmm. said what, how much money, we don't know. But we, we, we do know those two things are facts from both sides that they agree on that happened. And in my opinion, that's a business deal. If I go, hey, I'll mow your grass for $5. And someone says, nope, I'm only giving you a dollar. And I say three. And they go, I'm only giving you a dollar. And then we're, we're debating. And they find someone else to mow it for a dollar or whatever they agreed upon. It could have been three. could have been four. could have been more than I was offered. Who knows? They reached their agreement. They moved on. And to me, th- there's no foul play there. That's, that's just how business works. And I'm not here to argue how much is how much she should have been paid because I don't know how much Jennifer Hale was paid. I'm not going to say it was right. It was wrong. All I can say is was that's how business works. And I just feel, in my personal view, ethically, if you can't make a business deal, you shouldn't come out and be like, go boycott this product or go slander it or attack someone because – to me, to me, you were not done wrong. You, you within your right said, I want six figures plus royalties. They said, you can't do that. But you know what? We, you, we want you back, so we're going to try to meet you somewhere in the middle. Miss Taylor said, no go. And so it eventually got to the point where they found someone else. So, and that's how I feel about the situation. And more so about like the internet's reaction. I said this before I say again. You can't always take people at their word right at the beginning. I'm not saying you got to be skeptical of everyone, but clearly there was a lot more to this situation than was let on, you know, at least get both sides. And and then with this situation in particular, because it was a business deal, this wasn't, you know, I was, you know, you know, hurt physically, mentally, someone threatened my life. This was a peer and cut business deal. And I feel like that's something that's just between you and the company. Now, of course, you know, if you're being abused or hurt or attacked in any way, shape or form, people speak up. But this, you know, this was essentially like a breakup and one and one side slandering one side, making the other side slandering the other. And, you know, us, the audience getting into a situation that realistically had nothing to do with us. Mm. And granted, Miss Taylor did do a call to action. So that kind of, you know, brings people to the front, for she did, yeah. which I, I personally think I don't think you should do. Like Probably should. I heard someone say it like this. That's like a, a player from a football team. They can't negotiate their contract. <laughs> they they you know get cut leave for another team and tell people don't go to the other team's game. Yeah. You know that, that that's kind of the situation we're in. You know, the good thing is, you know, we are talking about voice actor pay and what's fair and it should be increased and stuff. And you know, I agree, but you know, people attack Jennifer Hill, and I'm like, I I didn't understand that part, but one, Jennifer Hill is also a professional. She she is one of the probably most well known voices in video games. Yep. And I'm thinking one, I don't think she's gonna be underpaid for anything <laughs> she does. I don't think so either. She's not gonna agree to anything she you I, know deems. Which is interesting because I agree. I agree with a lie you said first. Uh, let me back. Uh, let me start. Let me start with the beginning. So I definitely okay. agree with uh, something is being left out. I think from what she's saying. 
if they really did that, I think that I think I think that is laughable by Platinum Games. But if they did really do that, maybe they didn't want her back or something. But there's no way that Jennifer Hale accepted that. She's yeah. go look at her filmography. She's she's a millionaire, so she's not just going to be wasting her time on these things. So it's it that's what got me the strangest part is that I read in one pretty much when I saw the story for the begin with, I went, oh my god, this crazy they offered her three grand that's she probably literally can't pay her mortgage with that like 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 i said like if that was the total price that would be collectively less than what is required by law by the union yeah you know yeah so that so i was like is that i was like that can't be true and platinum has definitely been in a very strange spot itself openly asking to be purchased and things a lot of weird things they've been doing so I almost didn't even like bat an eye. I was like, it sounds like something Platinum would do because they honestly probably don't have a lot of money. But again, like you said, that it, it can't happen. So I'm we're definitely missing a very important piece of this puzzle. I don't think Jason Schreier's reporting, although it's important to uh to to read that and it was important to the story. I don't think it fully answers really any of the questions. Sure, it was maybe it was a little more, but even if it was fifteen grand, that's still like. That's still, I mean, that's still laughable. But like you said, at the end of the day, this was a business deal. I do think it was strange that she came out and was like, <laughs> boycott the game. Um, I, I'll read her quote one more time because it, it really took me aback. I was like, you you know, you, she, if you're someone who cares about people, cares about the world around you, and cares about who gets hurt with these financial decisions, I urge you to boycott the game. I, I think that's a little crazy, a little high. I won't say crazy. That's, that's. A little too harsh. I think that's a little, little up there. Let's. That's like going to a hundred. They just underpaid you, and it. It seems like you should just be like, "Hey, this was messed up, and I won't do it again." She definitely burned a bunch of bridges. I imagine so there's a couple people that don't really want to hire her now, maybe. Uh, but I will say, at the end of the day, my takeaway from this story was, uh, if 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 even if even half of it was true, if she was really like given pretty much the bare minimum of what she was worth, then. That's on Platinum Games. They lost a pretty good voice actress, and then I'm still surprised that Jennifer Hale's the act, the the, the runner up because like is, was she cheaper? Like I don't know. It's still very confusing. Yeah, you know, ultimately we don't we don't know what the numbers were. We yeah. don't, you know, you know, taking Jason Schreier's articles, like we don't know what part of the negotiation was that the first offer was that a counter offer? Did that offer yeah. include you know you know what I'm saying? There's so yeah. many things we don't know. And, you know, and the way the 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 take I take from it ultimately again, I don't know. When I heard the part about, okay, we can't get you on, but we'll offer you this. Hey, you know, three to four k, which is the approximate amount for a session. You know, we'll pay you one session, and you can have like a cameo or something. To me, that tells me like, hey, we're trying to work with you. You know, we're trying to. If if we can't reach an agreement for you to be the voice actor, maybe we'll just you know, hey, you'll come in, you'll say a couple of lines as you know as a fun wink and a nod, you know, and that lets me know, like, they, one side was at least open to trying to work something out. You know what I'm saying? Again, I don't know the full story, but when I heard that, I was like, it's hard for me to believe that they were just like, oh, you know, screw you, there's the door. Yeah, I like I said, I think there's like a, it's like in the middle, there's a giant middle puzzle piece that's just gone, and we will just, we'll probably never know. Most likely, we'll we'll just never know what what was actually going down. to quote Hamilton, I wasn't in the room where it happened. Yeah, yeah. Gary, Gary Cole. Amazing place. Yeah, but I think I think what this means for the industry going forward is just, you know, it, granted, it, this is not true for all situations. Like, you know, someone's like, someone's trying to murder me. <laughs> I'm just going to assume no one's going to lie about that. Yeah. Not saying that they, they can, but when something's that drastic, you got to get someone to benefit for doubt that you're not lying. Yeah. But, you know, when it comes to things like this, I'm just like, if it's strictly business... You know, you just kind of you just kind of have to, you know, take it with a grain of salt and be like, yeah, you know, because especially in the writing world, we we all know, like, you know, when it comes to freelancing and things, yeah. that's that's the nature of the beast. Yeah. And I'm not saying I'm not even giving right or wrong up or down. I'm just saying that just is what it is. And that's just how things work. And the higher you get up the ladder, the more power you have to negotiate your themes. I agree. And but you, but you know maybe ultimately you know we'll know more of this story. But like I guess the most interesting thing I can say just to cap it off is like you said earlier, this was a quick turnaround between startup controversy and like the next day. It was Very like, quick. 
Yeah, it, 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 I, I, I didn't comment on it because I was like, it's too early. I'm not going to. I'm also in a place where I shouldn't be just saying things without knowing information. Yeah. But it was fun to be like, people were like, pick your side. And then <laughs> everyone's, everyone quietly erased the line in the sand. I was just like, yeah. do what you want. <laughs> yeah. Very quick. And again, even even if it was true, like it's still a low number. So I was like, eh, interesting that everyone was like, oh, 15,000. That's half of these people live in San Francisco, the most expensive place to live almost in the world. So. Very interesting that, that that was like, oh, that's enough money. <laughs> but again, uh, who cares? I, I think this was a very valuable lesson for people at home. We're going we're gonna to skip ahead a little bit because I think it's more pertinent to bring it up now. And it's a little more serious, too. Kendon Jensen came forward recently to detail a whoring account about the work and experience that she had wor- uh, received while working at Rooster Teeth. The entire account is unfortunately too long to fully delve into on a podcast, so I will, only, so I will try and gather as much pertinent information as I can. Jensen worked there from 2013 to July 2022, having to uh, work underpaid by standards at her job and barely making $40,000 a year. After joining the company, almost immediately, she was given the nickname pretty much the F-word, which is an American slur used to attack gay men. It's, you know, fag. Now, in order for these people to call her this on camera, they used a shorter version called Fugs. Jensen came out as transgender in 2016, and she says that this is finally when the name calling stopped. This led to many people coming out of the woodworks, both former and current Rooster Teeth employees, speaking about or supporting her claims. Mainly, and I think the most pertinent to bring up is Michelia Burton, a.k.a. Mika Burton, who left Rooster Teeth in 2018, said on her Twitter that, quote, all I'm saying is I left out a lot of detail and was overly kind to blatant abusers who I didn't come, uh, so I didn't name drop back in 2020. The people speaking up about the horrific treatment at uh, Rooster Teeth isn't news. Seeing the N-word written on a white bird wasn't even close to my worst experience there. End quote. This led to Rooster Teeth having to make a full statement on the matter, and they had a huge write-up about how they made changes in 2020 with their f- HR team and fully changed how they report issues and to their credit came uh come people stated sorry let me back up and to their credit some people have come and stated that the environment at Rooster Teeth and the affiliate brands helped out a lot when they fully dissolved and replaced their former HR team quote many individual uh, individuals at Rooster Teeth acknowledge personal responsibility for their past actions both internally and externally end quote this is not even the least of Rooster Teeth problems as they are now owned by Warner Brothers Discovery and have received massive budget changes. And have seen many lay- layoffs. As recently as 2019, they saw almost 20% of their staff laid off. Founded in 2003 by Bernie Burns, Matt Holman, Jeff Ramsey, Jason Saldana, Gus Sorella, and Joe Heyman. Bruce's Teeth started with Red vs. Blue, a web-based episodic comedy series set in Halo and breaking news as I was getting ready for today's show. Another R- Rooster Teeth affiliate channel, Fun House. Uh, Adam Kovic is being accused of several misconducts happening when he was with uh, somebody at the time. I direct you to the Funhouse subreddit if you want full details as, one, it was barely video game related. And two, I believe he is already gone. So I think he already left and this is just like more stuff being brought to light. Odell, I'll start us off this time. uh, And I'll state that I think Rooster Teeth got uh, away with a lot of stuff over the years. Um, I've heard pretty uh crazy stuff from there pretty much since they've been as we know as rooster teeth of just how they treat with people and they're pretty much just their environment that they work in um and unfortunately none of this surprised me when i was reading it i was just like yeah this all seems track and i feel bad that kendon went through all of this uh no one should to go through all this and especially the entire time getting unpaid for it so underpaid i should say now they had a lengthy statement uh I don't care. It's it, they said it's gotten better as of two years ago. Uh, this was going on pretty much since 2013, so it doesn't really jive with me. I'm curious what your thoughts are. It's not like a couple people said. It's not like two or three people said it was bad. It was an overwhelming majority of people came out and was like, "Yeah, that place sucks to work at." What did you think? So you know. As a black man being in the video game space and someone who's been here for quite some time, like and on a professional quote unquote capacity since 2012, mm. but you know, I could probably stretch it earlier than that. Is I mean, I love gaming, it's my passion. So, you know, 
I can view with through rose colored glasses. And I think a lot of people do. And I think an interesting thing, a lot of people don't realize that the gaming industry touts itself as this progressive bastion, like this shining light and humanity and work culture, but it's just as bad as everywhere else. Think about, you know, corporate glass ceiling, white men, you know, and suits keeping everyone who's not a cis white Christian man down and about that's the gaming industry. And I think a lot of people don't want to admit that. That's the gaming industry, too. It's been the gaming industry also. And up until recently has been the gaming industry fully unchecked. Rooster Teeth is just a prime example of this. They are far from the only offender of this. And I think before I say my comment on them is that I think for the game industry to really move forward from these things, especially like, you know, what happened at Activision, what happened here, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We need to stop pretending that the game industry is this shining light of progressive behavior towards its people and employees because it's not. At its worst, it's just the same as everywhere else. You know, that's, that's just the hard truth of the matter. And the people at Rooster Teeth operated like this because they were allowed to because just like any other major, major corporation with all the evils and conservative views and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, that the game industry, I feel, tries to pretend is not here, it's just prevalent. And since everyone quietly pretends we're better, we've moved on, we've never been that, these things are allowed to happen in the dark just almost indefinitely. And I just feel that they're a result of a bigger problem industry-wide. And that's how you get things with the N-word on the whiteboard, calling someone that for literal years, years yeah. even feeling comfortable enough to say it on camera with an abridged version. And here's the thing why I don't That was one of the I worst things about personally, it. Yeah, they knew it was bad and they yeah. <laughs> made a nickname so they could say it on camera. Uh, I, I, I uh, interrupted you. Please go ahead. Oh, yeah, no problem. Yeah, if you got to make a fake name to say it on camera, you know, like, you know, you know, it's bad. You, you know, it's bad. But but now you, it's that's yeah. And here's the thing that annoys me when people come out and apologize. Again, this is just my personal feelings. I'm not condemning anyone. I'm not assigning any names. This is just my. So I was 16 once. I'm pretty sure if I if my MySpace still existed, I can find some dumb stuff. I said I never even had a job. All I knew was the, you know, my house, the school. I get it. We were all young once. We all learn and get better. You don't have that right to say that when you're 25, 26, 27, 23, 24. I'll give you, if I'm being lenient, maybe I'll give you from birth to 23. Maybe I'll be like, that's, that's your area to be young and foolish. Damn near 30. You don't got that excuse. I'm sorry. Some of these people were 35. I would. I just want everyone to know some of these people that were named. I, I, I researched all these people. I don't. I don't want this to be like the name assigned. So I didn't. I was going to include a bunch of. I don't want to just be like this guy, this guy. This. But a lot of these people are thirty five. Some of them forty now. So seven years ago, they were like thirty five, twenty nine. So so it, oh, yeah, it, no. it's very. You're, you're a you full can, on fledged you're, mature. Adult. You're a grown man, <laughs> and you're still doing all this. Yeah. This wasn't like you uh, know, this wasn't like Smosh or something, and like when YouTube started, like like it's not like it's not like yeah, this like wasn't 16. the wild wild west of YouTube yeah. where you know you could put a video of cutting off your foot and hey, <laughs> you got ten million views. Go yeah. You. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, speaking um, pretty much just about the industry, I, I I couldn't agree with you more that I think a lot of people like to pretend like we are the bastion, and I will say this: I've I've met. I've met some of the most racist, sexist people in the gaming industry, and they do it in a way that they can hide it, or they at least pretend like that's not the thing that they care about, while the whole time that's like the one thing they fixate about. So I definitely can agree with you there. Bringing up Rooster Teeth again, yeah, I, I just, I don't follow these people, so I don't, I didn't, at the end of the day, like, none of this affects me. I already don't consume their content, the closest thing I get to. It's actually kind of funny. I believe they're affiliated only through like ad sales, AdSense ad sales, and I believe merch. So like, I guess in a way I'm supporting this, but at the end of the day, like I've written these people off for a while and this is just like another example of like, yeah, th this place seems pretty terrible. And again, I'll, I'll remind everyone, Mika Burton's account was in 2020. That was two years ago that that happened. Two years ago. 
Just just as a reminder that people who probably did that still work there. And I think it's awful. <laughs> awful. So I, I can't knowingly uh, associate them. Until they fix oh, yeah. something. Because, again, I, I, it's only been two years. Like, you gotta, like, do stuff. You can't just be like, we have three, like, pictures of our statement that about how everything's better now. But, yeah, you know, I'm happy when stuff like this comes to light because, you know, you know, I think, you know, as the old saying goes, people only change either because, you know, they want to or they're forced to. Yeah. And I think specifically about gaming, you know, our passion, the industry, stuff we love. Gaming has been saying they've wanted to for a long time, and clearly they've never wanted to. Mm. We we only started seeing change, quote unquote, with the big minority push because 2020 just got that bad. It was just yeah. that bad of a year, at least here in America, racially and ethnically speaking. Like, you know, we had full on, you know, police departments like burning down yeah. by the community they serve. Yeah. Yeah. They, so you know things things had gotten to a point where it was just like you couldn't just say things anymore and i feel like you know in gaming it also got to a point where it's like because i'll be the first say i for years always thought gaming was just lip service because i've been there like i saw like i've been the i saw behind the veil and i knew everything the game industry was saying outwardly was not what was actually happening but you know I'm, I'm trying to get my spot. So, you know, you, you, you got to, you know, it's always that balancing act of how much do I want to rock the boat? No, oh, I feel that. And I feel bad that you have to do that. That that's kind of shitty that you had to have to deal with it until yeah, like you can, until you're in that, that sucks. And I, and I yeah, kind of feel you there. Although of course not in the same way, <laughs> nowhere close. Yeah, no, you know, it, it's different for everyone to a degree, but here, here's the part where it's not good per se, but like I said, why I personally, it's just the same as anywhere else, you know. It's not like this is a game industry. It's kind of just like a cultural problem. Yeah. I, if I said that the, the only problem that would make it unique to gaming is gaming just pretends it doesn't exist here, but yeah. it, it just also does. Yeah, yeah. Agreed. Agreed. And it, very well said. Thank you. Let's talk about video games. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we can finally stop talking about rumors as we are finally able to just talk about the reveals as Konami has shown off their plan for the Silent Hill franchise. Let's start with the games that were finally confirmed. We can expect Silent Hill 2 Remake be, uh, being worked on by Blooper Team, the studio behind Layers of Fear and the Medium. No news on the release day, but it will be exclusive to PS4 and PS5 for a year. Keeping with the game announcement, Silent Hill F was teased. It will be a whole new game in the universe and will be set in Japan in the 1960s. It will be written by Rikushi07, which is a pen name. I couldn't find who it was attached to. I found like two different people and I didn't want to like, assign the wrong person. Uh, so sorry about that. And it was being developed by Neobards Entertainment. Neobards has done a lot of port work of the Resident Evil series and has uh, seemed to mostly been working as a support studio. So uh, as far as I, I could find, this is their first like real like by themselves game. I saw them do support work on like Marvel's Avengers, a lot of the Resident Evil ports, re remake two, three, uh, the ports for um, the uh, uh, Origins. Like there's a bunch of stuff. So this looks like their first real game. And then to quickly go over non-gaming news, at the event, Silent Hill Ascension was announced. It will be a multiplayer visual novel game, something or something like Until Dawn with story-based decisions. I was thinking like Until Dawn or um, the Telltale games like Walking Dead. That's kind of how they described it. It said it will be like choice-based without a reset button. So that's what I'm thinking. And then Silent Hill Townfall, which Konami gave no details for. Um, and then they announced uh, like uh, the, the sequel to a movie. Anyways, Odell, what are your you thoughts? know, I was my my biggest thoughts was like, how do you have a visual novel multiplayer game? That sounds interesting. It sounds very interesting. I'm not sure how that works, but conceptually, I'm like, that's interesting. I mean, I'm not a big horror fan, so I'm probably playing none of these. Maybe maybe the visual novel choice game, maybe maybe, but the rest, I look forward to seeing it. Like, I can never mm. play these games, but you know, I'm not the biggest fan of let's plays. But horror games is one of the few areas where I watch it because I'm just like, I can never do this. Like, I remember, what was that game with the doll that came to life? Hugsy Wugsy or something? Oh, my God. There what? Was, Sounds horrific. That was, <laughs> horrifying. That, that, was all, that was all the rage for a while. Like, I watched someone play, and I was just like, oh, I could never. Mm. I could never. And I got, and I got Google it. Who's Hugsy Wugsy? What? It reminds me of the, uh, 
that reminds me of the Five Nights at Freddy game. Something I never played, but I, I watched people play it like when it came out, like when it was like real big. But that was something, yeah, I don't think I wanted to play because it did seem kind of scary. Oh, the game is called Poppy Playtime, but the main Poppy Playtime. antagonistic force in the game is a thing called Hugsy Wugsy. It I don't terrifying. like that. Uh, yeah, that sounds very scary. This um, The teaser for this game seemed very terrible, especially Silent Hill F. Uh, very gory, and it's it kind of seems to try and harken back to like the I wouldn't say classic, but like you know, the uh kind of nurses that were she was like dragging that pipe on the ground. So I'm like, yeah, they definitely want to harken back to like the the different sound design choices that Silent Hill picks with to the way they influenced horror. Uh, this yeah. th- I'm curious what your thoughts are from we kind of get Konami going from zero to 100 here with the Silent Hill franchise, we got nothing for well over 10 years, and now we're getting like three games in a movie <laughs> so like, you know, what, I, what's I, see, it, I see it like this um well one i want to shout to silent hill because it's, to me it's one of the scariest horror games because one of the few horror games where you're pretty much helpless and you know you don't got you really don't got no gun you, you're not like a superhuman kicking your your foot through like you know <laughs> evil things so i was but i, I think they kind of had to honestly we, after the whole pt and um kojima thing yeah you know, I'm not here to pass judgment, but after that, like, you kind of had to, right? So kudos to them. You know, they were like, you know, we got to figure it out. We got to get our ducks in the row before we show anything. We got to come strong. And I think they did. Like, you know, in, any Silent Hill fan that was like, man, we're not going to get we're not going to get PT. We're not going to see that vision. You know, we're not going to have Norman Reedus <laughs> in video games because apparently, you know, he needs to be now. He's, he's just he's just the thing that happens in video games. Yeah. Uh. And I'm just like, yeah, if you're going to be gone for a decade working on a series, this is how you come back. Remake of one of the favorites in the franchises, uh, a completely new game that's looking to, you know, revitalize not only the, the series, but the genre as a whole. You know, a sequel to a movie, you know, a multiplayer visual novel game that's never been done before and just a project with a name. Yeah, that's regardless of how any of these turn out, it's knocked it out the park, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, they at least put their foot forward, whereas for years they haven't put anything forward. So uh, this is interesting to see. I will, I'm will. i excited to play the Silent Hill 2 remake. I've never played it before. Uh, Blooper Team seems to be capable of at least remaking the game, so that's a little exciting. The pictures at least look nice. I'll have to determine more about the game when it comes out. A little upsetting that it's uh, exclusive to ps4 and ps5 for a year but it's eh, it's fine I, I don't mind too much i'll just play it there it's just annoying that i can't play on my xbox but um but yeah silent hill f looks cool but it was one of those things where okay i didn't we didn't really see the game we just kind of got a teaser 1960 japan looks cool uh but aside from that yeah I, I i am excited but at the same time it's one of those things where it's like oh cool the thing we knew about is happening so you know Hey, you know, when it comes to gaming, I I don't I will never complain about like true. things actually getting dates or move forward because there are lots of things that we know are happening that to this day I am still waiting for. Yep, yep, yep. yep hoping, yep. praying when it sees the light of day. One day Star Wars 13 to 13 will come back. Well, one one day Beyond Good and Evil 2 will come out. Oh no. Speaking <laughs> of Ubisoft. <laughs> <laughs> they have experienced the departure in the form of David Gribble, who was the director of the upcoming Splinter Cell remake. He has left the company. After 11 years, he said on LinkedIn, simply, quote, time to go on a new adventure, end quote. David worked on the Tom Clancy series back in 2012 and 2013 with Ghost Recon, Future Shover, and Splinter Cell Backlist, respectively. He had a couple other credits, but I wanted to just go over this quickly. Uh, I think um, usually I am worried about projects that lose their director, but this is... And nowhere near the middle of the project. This is actually still, I believe, in, I think they just exit pre-pro, if I remember correctly, because I think they got greenlit, and they were probably working on pre-pro. I think they were greenlit like earlier this year, I want to say, and they're probably already finishing up pre-pro and they're about to start full production. And and I assume whatever he was trying to do, probably they probably said no, and he just said, "All right, I'm gone." So they'll find a new director to replace him. Um, and we'll just have to see. It's still a remake. We'll still have to see what this game is, what it means to the franchise. I don't know, but it was pertinent to bring up that he has left the studio. Did you have any remarks on this? Uh, especially being a Beyond Good and Evil 
uh, too fan. I, I, uh, I mean, <laughs> who knows what the I mean, Ubisoft you, you if they're just, gonna release you, any you, of these games. You just hate to see it. I'm not, I'm not the biggest uh, Splinter Cell fan. No, I'm an MGS guy. No, but, but you, you, you hate to see it. Like for anyone, like any game series that people want to see. You know, you, you, you never want to hear news that hey, the game that you've been waiting for, I'm gonna keep waiting, maybe indefinitely. Yep. You know, because yeah, people love the. <laughs> Metro Prime Four. Yeah, God, yes, yeah. Uh, but but you know, there you 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 never want to hear that a game has died, mm. and you know, you you always want to believe that hey, you know, something something's gonna, even though it may not happen in the time frame we want it, you know, this game will see the light of day. So, you know, congratulations to him and his new journey. You know, congratulations to the team that may have, you know, got some promotions, you know, that <laughs> more important That's role. I, yeah. So, you know, I, I hope Splinter Cell, Sam Fisher, you know, gets the return that he deserves. Let's close out with this story and we'll let Odell go. Well, the obvious happened. I don't think anyone would have thought this soon, though, as G4 TV has yet again found itself canceled. Reported on by Deadline, a memo sent to all employees by Spectre CEO Dave Scott. The network never gained traction and HR will be helping with the closure. This wasn't incredibly surprising as we already saw people jumping ship as their president back in 2021 left the company shortly after. Um, uh, and I'm sorry, and then shortly after that, Blair Herter left the company as well. And even Kevin Pereira was leaving. Uh, this happened just after the large layoff of about 20 people. We covered that last week. And to keep an eye, their total count of people was about at, post the layoff 200. And they were in an incredibly expensive building to boot. I don't think it took a soothsayer to uh, figure out this was going to fail, um, Odell. Uh, combined with the headcount that they had of over 200 people, combined with the giant lot that they purchased to run all of this, before they made any money, uh, they started at the maximum cost possible and, I guess, expected in some way to generate revenue to counter it. I don't know, but uh, it is unfortunate. I'm never happy to see anyone lose their jobs, although, of course, this was surprising that anyone thought that this was a good idea. You know, it, it's, uh, like you said, it's sad when these things happen, and, you know, you never want to see them happen because, you know, you know, people always work their hardest to, you know. My thing is, as someone who's, in, who's you know, you know, still trying to make his ultimate dreams come true. Been here. I know what it's like to grind. Yep. I know what it's like, and I could. I I would never wish it on my worst enemy to be offered a job, be it at G four, any major media outlet, and then within a year's time, period. But especially within your first year, to find yourself back in that grind, like, yep. I can't even fathom how that must make someone feel. And of course, I know they're all gonna keep grinding, get back at it do what they can, you know, do their best to, you know, to find even greater success in the future. And it's one of those things, um, it's interesting because, you know, I wouldn't say no one's surprised, you know, surprised, you know, per se, but it, and I feel like it was one of those things on paper, it made sense. Because, you know, a lot of their, a lot of their people had big followings already of their own, you know, you know, that could come over and things. And I assume with, you know, being owned by a corporation, you know, maybe they had some budget and stuff. And, you know, the thing I would say is if it ultimately dissolved or became something else, I'd be like, yeah, but I never, me personally, I never expected to be, to be gone this soon. I didn't either. Like, I, I thought they would at least make a year. I, I would argue that it might not made it past that, but. I would agree on paper. I think it was an okay idea bringing back G4 in name and X play and attack of the show and bringing these things back and seeing what happens. I definitely agree with, but I just think that once it went into effect, once the giant sum of money was injected, once they hired 200 people, once that they kind of got the original people that kind of didn't, I believe Morgan Webb was nowhere near the same. I think she was there at like the reveal, but didn't come back. Jessica Chobot, I don't believe came to this really at all Blair Herder was only there for a few months clearly because he was I think he smelled the smoke and dipped out although he said he wanted to like to spend more time with his family I was like mm, I think you kind of smelled the fire because it was a heavy coincidence that you left right before <laughs> everything fell apart um it's and uh I would have loved a 
tacked it closer to like something like um I don't know, something like smaller, like something like Min Max, kind of funny, easy allies or something, where it's like maybe it's like ten people and like it's like low budget and they do Twitch streams and they try to bring back X Play. Maybe they bring back Adam Sessler every now and then to like do a review or something. I don't know, but it would have been that would have been cool, although that just that never happened. They 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 went full on deep. They went oh, I'm sure I'm sure they'd like dumped way too much money into this and then like some higher up went over and looked and went like why did we spend so much money on this what is going on why have we not solved pretty much a any percentage of return and they just pulled the plug unfortunate and again i agree with you i can't imagine getting a job there and then being like it's over in uh what it's been like nine months it's i think it's actually 11 months i think they started november 10th of last year so like Right on the precipice of the year anniversary, it's all gone. And that's that's sad. As a guy, like you said, that's grinding it out, I, I wouldn't I would not uh, not watch that on my worst enemy either. I I couldn't imagine doing this and, and then just getting a huge job and then being like, by the way, in nine months it's over. So that's horrific. But uh, again, all all my all the hearts go out to everybody. I feel bad for everyone. Uh the on talent people, no offense, they all have money, they're good. I feel bad for like the people behind the scenes, the producers, all these people, the, the people that were just kind of helping in the background might, might not have got the big budget money. I think I read somewhere that per appearance fee, some of these people are being paid $25,000, like just, just like a crazy amount of money. So like they were definitely burning the uh, candle at both ends. Any lasting thoughts yeah, before we move just, on? Uh, no, just, um, you know, cause uh, you know, these, these situations are always delicate, you know, I never want to, you know, insult someone who got caught up and, you know, and things, you know, beyond their control. And it's kind of just like, uh, if I had to just chalk it up to just, you know, again, speaking generally here, hmm. is that, you know, it's weird because gaming is still such a new thing. And we don't we don't feel like it's new, but in the grand scheme of things, it is. Yeah. And, it, and there's still a lot of room where it's such... In the in the essence of games, such a different form of media, you know, like it's it's an active form of media. You know, we've had books, we've had movies, we had TV. You know, and these things, as as vastly different as they can be, is still a very pa it's a passive form of thing. It's something that you know you're not actively doing. You don't have to actively do anything to read a book other than reading. You know, <laughs> yeah, you don't yeah. have to actively do anything to watch a movie. You don't have to actively do anything. Yeah be part of a TV show, but gaming is so fundamentally different that, you know, it's an active thing. And then to make con like, it, it's weird because it's like, you know, like I look at let's plays and things and there's always people who say like, why would you watch someone play a game? Cause that's fundamentally not how the games meant quote unquote yeah. to be enjoyed. Yeah, yeah. But you know, it, 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 as long as you enjoy something, there's always new and fascinating ways to enjoy things. That's not the norm. But in terms of like, how do you mass produce this and make a profit off it? You know, it's people are still finding their ways. You know, you know, it, it's it, there. There's no, there's no win formula in gaming. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I agree. I, like, there you, isn't like a secret sauce to any of this. Yeah, you can have someone who can start streaming today, and all they play is Pong, and a month from now they have five million followers playing Pong. Yep, I can tell you why. Yeah, I. I can tell you, and they're like playing like OG Atari Pong at that. Yeah, like if we brought and, up like the four top streamers, uh, like just off the top of my head, I, I, like Ninja, Doctor Lupo. I don't know. I'm not like huge in the scene, but like you know, I couldn't tell you why any of them are particularly the one people like because I just don't think that that's just how it's just not how it works. It's just like it's like a mixture of like t talent and a mixture of luck and a mixture of timing and a it's just like it's it's just like a bunch of different things and. I don't think I, I can't tomorrow be like, oh, you know what? I, you know what? I'm going to make it now. Like, this is when I'm going to make it. it. It doesn't really happen that way. I don't think. Yeah, not, not, you know, especially in gaming, because, you know, some things just take off and just and it's a it's it's a it's a weird medium to me in a way, because there's so many things in gaming when you when you're not talking about the actual games themselves, like, you know, like I'm a, you know, like, for example, X YouTuber of X series. I don't make the game. I don't direct the game. I have no input of the game. 
none of the profits of the sales goes to the game, but you know, I'm an influence of the series and people like me talking about it and I'll play it. You know, I'm, I'm really good. Not the best, not the greatest, but you know, a margin of good. And you know, I'm charming or maybe I'm not. Cause sometimes people like someone for not being charming and not being that, you know, like wonderful personality. Like there's kind of dull and people are like, I love this person. Or they're kind of mean, but they like it. Now, I don't, I, I don't, yeah. I don't get it either. I, there's yeah. a couple people that I know that are popular in streaming that I'm like, how could you watch this? And uh, that's just what they like. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. And, and again, unlike like games are games kind of live forever, you know, mm. in, in a different way than movies and TV shows, because, you know, you could tell someone like, hey, this is an old movie watching has a cult following. But like, look at Among Us. Among Us was out for two whole years. That's probably one just of the craziest just, ones to me. Yeah, is yeah Among Us existing. was out and it it's not like it changed. It was kind of always yeah, it, that way. It's not like it had a big update. It wasn't like a No Man's Sky moment that like changed like the way people perceive the game. It was the same. It just happened to be like one day these like I think it was like five people like, oh, let's play this game on stream. And it like exploded. Yeah, so it's I think, you know, no shout out to G4, you know, maybe it can um, exist again and stuff. But I think this is a bigger lesson because we're like gaming is still young to where I feel like we don't have legacy brands just yet. Mm, Like in terms of company, like, okay, you know, you got Sony, Microsoft, Nintendo, et cetera. But in terms of like, you know, you know, your IGNs, your game spots and stuff, you know, gaming sites, you know, they just, they're just kind of there, you know, I I know there's, there's, there's whole generations now where like gaming media, you know, to me, gaming media back in the day was tips and tricks magazine, game informer magazine, Xbox, game trailers.com. Yeah. For those who remember. Yeah. Game trailers. Yeah. Screw attack. Yep. Yep. All that. You know, and, and some of those things aren't around now. And I know some kids now I have a cousin, uh, she's 22. Like her gaming news comes like exclusively, like from Twitch. She's, Yep. She like uh she she in her mind IGN is like something that used to be a thing but it's no longer a thing yeah. despite it clearly still being a thing. And yeah. you know anyone would be like oh IGN they're one of the OGs of the OGs you know how do you not know them but there's g- generations of people who are like because game media is still like you know there there's no there's no outside of the games themselves the literal product you know Super Mario World, the original Mario Brothers, Pac-Man, Pong, like I said earlier, Tetris. But in terms of like content producing companies outside of like, you know, the big three, like, you know, people that it's, it's we're still basically finding our footing, you know, it, we're still in the era where like, are people actually going to buy and watch television? Because for those yeah. who don't remember, when they first made TVs, companies did not know if people would buy and watch them. They're like, would people sit in front of this box and watch a program? I don't, people were really hesitant to invest into it. Yeah. They were like, no, they have the radio, right? Like they could just have, yeah, that. they don't have to watch the yeah, radio. People, like why would they watch yeah, TV? People, people really thought that there's no way the TV could outperform the radio. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was, <laughs> a, that was we a reality are. we were in and they're in like the four channels they had destroyed the radio. Yeah. Um, so, and I think gaming is still very much in that, that TV moment of like what, how do people want to consume content and the way technology changes, you know, I mean, there's people, I know people who go, who watch, you know, TikTok for all their information. Yeah. My, I, I, um, like, my wife, uh, follows, um, I'm blanking on her name. She does, um, she does like things. Uh, this is going to sound crazy if you don't know what it is, but she like, she does news under a desk. I'm not sure who she is, but but she's she's fun. She's she's very funny. She shows me her videos sometimes, but like she like gives you the news, but it's but under like under a desk and like I I, I forget like the shtick, but like that's that's how she gets a lot of her news. I, I'm I'm constantly reading the news. I love it. I, I don't know why, but I've I've just kind of always been that way. And she'll come at me. Was like, hey, did you see what happened in like Yemen? And I was like, how the fuck do you know that? And she <laughs> and she's like, well, you know, this person. I was like, oh, OK, that's cool. But so, yeah, I definitely feel you on that. Yeah. People are finding new ways of getting educated. That isn't even even not even talking about games like CNN, MSNBC, like people aren't really watching that shit anymore. Like the people watching that are 30, 40, 50, like. The people growing up now are finding different ways of consuming that different media. And I, and that will also speak to games media and probably why it's 
kind of trailing in relevancy. I think we see that with Sony pretty much not really caring about IGN GameSpot anymore. They only really speak to like what like the Washington Post and Forbes. And I think that's it. So like even Sony like has moved on from kind of like the IGNs of the world. So it's so, so something else. So I think you hit something like very pertinent and something that I think everyone listening should just kind of think about. Yeah, that's that's very wise, I think. Yeah, but you know, RIP G four. Yeah, I miss know, it. It was, I, while, it was fun while it lasted. Yeah, yeah. I I'll be honest. I I didn't watch a little, literally a single second of their comeback. I, I'm not gonna pretend like I did, but I loved X Play back in the day. I loved it when Adam Sessler would uh do his little like it's four out of five. Like that's just the biggest nostalgic hit to me ever. But I don't know. We moved. I kind of went on. We kind of moved on. So. Odell, you have to leave soon, so I'm going to ask you a question I generally ask at the beginning, but I didn't think we'd have time, so I'm going to ask you two okay. back-to-back questions before you leave. And that one is going to be, of course, Odell, what have you been playing? What have you been playing these last... Oh, well, if we weren't recording, oh. right now I'll probably be playing Mario Plus Rabbit's uh, Sparks of Hope. Oh, do you like this? Is this good? I hear it's... Very good, actually. I, I, I haven't actually started it. I, I bought it oh, today. You know, oh, I put okay. it in my Switch so I can, you know, do his day one patch or whatever. Yep, yep, yep. But I, I haven't actually started, so I'll let you know. But I will definitely be playing that. I've been playing Splatoon, and I've been playing a. Re- I've I've been replaying through Pokemon Yellow. I kept oh, I kept yes. having this urge, and I I kept telling myself I'll wait till I get my analog pocket, but the urge got too strong. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. I've been replaying that. So. Splatoon, Pokemon Yellow, and Pokemon now Pokemon Yellow Mario is Rabbit. majestical. I love Pokemon Yellow. It has a special place. I only I did play it back in when it came out. I only played it like ten years ago. Now I think something like that. Then playing it, it was awesome. I I loved playing it. Like it, 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 no no wonder Pokemon's so big because the formula works so well. Um. I have been playing quite a bit. I won't cover too, too much. I actually covered it in the beginning of the show. So this will just be kind of like a smaller rehash. But I finished Inscription, which is a fantastic game I think everyone should play. It's kind of a horror, not really horror, more suspenseful kind of card game. It's very fun. I think everyone should try it out. It, I love it. It tells a story in a way only video games can. And I really don't want to go too, too much further because it'll spoil it. But... I think everyone should at least give it a shot because it is a very special game and I loved it. I finished, um, oh, sorry, I'm, I started Plague's Tale Requiem, the sequel to, of course, Plague's Tale Innocence. I finished um, the first game of the series recently to get ready for this one and I'm enjoying the sequel uh, to a, a huge degree. I love it. Um, and then I started uh, this morning at 1 p.m. Eastern, not this morning, but this afternoon, 1 p.m. Eastern, uh, the Call of Duty Early Access campaign went live. I gave that a shot so far. Amazing. It's amazing. I'm only about... The five. remake of two, correct? Yes, yes. The remake, the two that comes out the 28th, I believe. They gave um, everyone like a week early access pretty much to like the campaign. So like if you bought like a special edition, you got it early and it's great. I love it. I'm only about like five missions in, but it's awesome. It's, I'm having cool. a blast. Um, yeah, that's, you know, that's all I'll cover. And then we're going to ask you one more question. And of course, Ooh. what do you have queued up? Now, you kind of already answered that. So this co- this would have been a, a TV <laughs> show, a, a movie, a game, a podcast, anything. But you kind of already said that with Mario and Rabbit. So that's going to be your weekend, it's, uh, assumably. Yeah, but if we, if we want to look towards the future, uh, my it's probably just going to be God of War. And yeah. Pokemon, and that that's 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 gonna carry me home throughout mm-hmm. the rest of the year. I, I feel like I'm forgetting the title, like because in my mind it was like Mario, God of War, Pokemon, and there was like a fourth title that I kept saying I was gonna get, but now I'm drawing a blank on that, so I don't know what that is. Maybe it's something that's actually come out next year. Because I do that a lot with January, February games. I'm like, yeah, this year, wait, this no, year, like, no, 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 January, February, now. Yeah. I, oh wait, I think it was One Piece Odyssey, but I think that's been delayed until January. That sounds right. My next. Nintendo game is, of course, Pokemon and then Fire Emblem Engage. Cannot wait for that game. Uh, but aside from that, yeah, I, I'll be playing the Call of Duty campaign. I'm going to finish that probably. I might finish it tonight, to be honest with you. I mean, Call of Duty games are short. Oh, so. Very nice. so I might finish that tonight you know, and then go back to Plague's Tale. Ooh, Plague's Tale is a good one, but I still haven't played the original. So like, I'm like, I'm the type of person, like, I got to play the first one first. I don't want to jump in and 
be all what's going on yeah with story. what's happening i i think it's on game pass i don't know if you have that but if you do you can play it there but aside from that oh well, i'm gonna let you go we just ended right. the, uh, we're gonna end it a little early because uh, we actually got through the news a little faster than i thought we would which is good and it gives you time to continue your day thank you for giving us the time now you already said it prior but i want you to say it again where can the people find you you said the podcast what is that uh oh, well, you can find me on Twitter at Oldo Harmon Jr. It's just my name. Great, I keep it simple. Great Twitter follow. But also, by the way. great Twitter follow. I have a I have a weekly Nintendo podcast that I'm on called the Toadstool Boardroom. Definitely make sure to check that out. It's every Thursday at noon Pacific, three Eastern. I believe it's the time difference there. Don't quote me on that. <laughs> but yeah, it's every Thursday. You know. Like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. If you love Nintendo, it is a great place for Nintendo news. And yeah, just follow me on Twitter if you know. Is this on Am I saying YouTube? Is, you or is it to me? only podcasts? Oh, it is on YouTube. Yes, it is on YouTube and okay. anywhere podcasts are found. I was trying to find it. There I'm like, where YouTube is it? Version. Okay, cool. Yeah, so you got Spotify, Apple Music, Apple Podcasts, excuse me, YouTube, the Toadstool Boardroom. There you go. There- Anyways, yeah, thank you for joining me and uh, giving me your time. This was fun. I will sell. Uh, I want it on record, by the way. You are the <laughs> fastest uh, message that I've ever gotten. Sometimes I'll get something in a day, a couple hours, a couple <laughs> weeks. I've had someone message me five weeks later, be like, oh, yeah, I can do it. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> so, so you are the <laughs> fastest person to ever hit me up. Thank you so much for that. I, that, that was a very appreciative. Oh, yeah. of, uh, of uh, no problem. I, I, like to, I like to keep give myself the 24 hour rule. Uh, like, my, my train of thought is, you know, I've, I know what it's like to be an upstart. Not saying you are, but I know what it's I like to be an upstart. I definitely am. Don't, don't. You're not, you're not uh, offending me with that. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, just working my way through the industry, like, a uh, I figured I had to figure out a lot of my own, honestly, and no, it too. was not the it was not the funnest of times. So I told myself, I was like, Lord, you know, until I get like Miyamoto levels of like <laughs> famous or busy, I will always if someone reaches out to me, I'll always make time to respond and do what I can. Yes. So, that, so I, I, try, I try to keep myself to that to that to that rule because I because I tell myself there may come a day where like I'm actually like, you know, I'm in Japan on Thursday and America on Wednesday and this and that. And, you know, I got to do this. You know, I, I don't know. I don't know where life's going to take me. You know, and clearly at that, if it reaches that point, I wouldn't have time to do stuff like this. So I was like, well, I got the time. I definitely got the energy. You know, I'm going to make it a point to be on, you know, any anything asterisk because, you know, of course, you know. Yeah, there'd be There's some things be you somebody- work and you're like, mm, <laughs> maybe not that one. <laughs> yeah, but that's but a yeah. that's a great. Well, that's something I do. Also, try to uh, I something I also try to do as both. I know how it is because I'm doing it right now, and also like I know how it is for people to just not. I don't care if people say no. I have no problem with that. It's just that when people don't answer, that kind of hurts my feelings. I'm like, eh, you can you can just say no. It's fine. You don't have to like ignore me. But um, again, thank you so much, dude. I, I, this was so much fun, and uh, I will definitely hit you up again. This this was great. I, uh, maybe in the next year we can get you back on for something. Oh, yeah, most definitely, uh, and always uh, thank you for having me on. I appreciate it. Yeah, man, and uh, until next time, Achievers. Go, Chief. <laughs>